All right. Have you guys been watching uh, your favorite Christmas movies yet uh, this season? A few of you, yeah, okay. Christmas story maybe for some of you. Uh, if it's my household, it's Home Alone 1 and 2. Um, <laughs> classics. Uh, but I have to say, my, my favorite Christmas story is A Christmas Carol. And I think the reason why I love this story so much is because of the transformation Scrooge goes through. To see this person who is this selfish, self-centered person, so self-centered and greedy, and then by the end, he is just extravagantly wanting to bless everybody. You know, he sends the turkey to Bob Cratchit's house and he raises his salary. Then he gives the big donation to the charity that he had snubbed before. And then he spends Christmas with Fred and his family, even though he had snubbed them before. All of these wondrous things and the, the joy that you see on his face as he's going about doing all this good, ah, oh, it inspires me so much. And friends, I, I believe this, this impulse to bless, to pursue someone else's well-being over your own, to the point where you would, you would joyfully sacrifice for them, to bless them, that is the very heart of Christmas. Because that is what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. Now, we've been in a sermon series this Advent called Jesus Foreshadowed, Seeing the Messiah in Genesis. And one of the grand themes of the entire book of Genesis is the blessing of God, God's blessing. When God made the world, he blessed Adam and Eve. They were in perfect paradise. But then we know the curse entered the world through sin and God's punishment. And so in Genesis, there is this huge tension between the curse and the blessing. And the question is, which one of these is going to win out? Will this world be forever cursed or will God's blessing somehow prevail? How can humanity experience the blessing of God while they live in a cursed world? Isn't that a question that you want to know the answer to today as we live in this broken and weary world? How do we experience the blessing of God? Well, first let's ask, what does it mean to be blessed by God? And I think I, I would put it this way. To be blessed by God means to have his favor upon you in such a way that it results in your total well-being. His favor, his favor is upon you and that results in your total well-being. That includes physical, emotional, material, and one's relationship to God, others, and creation. So ever since the fall, God has been on a mission to reverse the curse and to bring his blessing to the world, to the nations. Because God loves his world. He loves his creation. He wants to bless his people and he wants to restore his blessing. So the whole story of the Bible, I think one could argue, is that it's a grand narrative of how is God going to restore his blessing to all of creation. And we await that final restoration when Jesus comes again, right? But today I want to focus on three ways that people can see God's love through his blessing. And we're going to look at Abraham, we're going to look at Jesus and the church. But let's begin by going all the way back to Genesis. So this is number one. We see God's love through the blessing of Abraham. We see his love through the blessing of Abraham. So the Bible begins, Genesis 1 through 11 is the story of the fall uh, and how the world gets into this cursed state. We have Adam and Eve's uh, disobedience in the garden. We have the flood. We have the Tower of Babel uh, where people try to build a tower to heaven to make a name for themselves. And so uh, God then spread everybody out. And from that moment on, people are going to exist as competing nations, as various nations with various languages and different lands, worshiping various gods. So we see that division and idolatry and all these things have entered into the world. God's original blessing, his blessed world, has now become a curse. And so it shouldn't surprise us that after we get through this whole narrative of the fall, that God's first step in the plan of redemption is to bless. It's to bless someone. So he calls Abraham. This is where we get Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the promise that was read for us. And 
This, if you're reading the narrative, it comes seemingly out of nowhere. It seems totally random. God calls this man named Abraham to himself. He initiates a relationship with him. He reveals himself to him. And so apparently this has nothing to do with Abraham's goodness, right? It's God who sets his love, his attention, his blessing upon Abraham, not because he is worthy or he has earned it. God blesses him out of his generous love and grace. And look at how much God says he will do for Abraham. If you're following along, Genesis 12 says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. See, God is, he's lavishing blessing, his favor upon Abraham. He's pouring it out. And God is reminding me of of Scrooge at the end of the story. I'm going to give you land. I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. You will be blessed and you will be a blessing. God's favor and protection will be upon him. And Abraham's name will be great. Why is God doing all of this? We wonder. Well, it's not because God is spoiling Abraham like some of you grandparents are going to do for your grandkids on Christmas Day. That's not what God is doing. And it's not because Abraham is somehow on God's nice list this year. No, our loving God is on a mission to save the world. And through one man who is blessed, God is going to restore his blessing to the nations. And see, God, he's wanting to work through people, through people. He made us to bear his image, We were meant to co-rule with God over creation in the beginning. But at the Tower of Babel, people tried to build their own nation apart from God's blessing. Let's build this tower. Let's make a name for ourselves. Let's build our own nationalistic brand. Let's build our own name. But God doesn't work that way. God will not work that way. God is instead going to build his own nation. Instead of people striving for his blessing, his blessing will be upon them. Instead of people building a name for themselves, God is going to build the nation and make uh, Abraham's name great. And so it's through Abraham, God is essentially establishing a beachhead in this world of cursed nations. You know, the the beachhead in in war where there's an established position uh, in enemy enemy territory, and it's from that beachhead you launch your next move your invasion into the world. And so into this cursed world of scattered nations, God sends a blessed nation through whom he will restore his blessing to the other nations. Are you guys with me? Are you with me? This is what God is doing to save the world. So why is God blessing Abraham? so that his blessing will be restored to the nations, so that others will be blessed in turn, because God always blesses so that we can be a blessing. And so Abraham agreed to this. He signed up for this. He agreed, I will be a conduit of God's blessing to the world. But as he agrees to this promise, look at how much he had to give up. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you your country, your land, your people, your relatives, your your father's household. I mean, these were the most important things to a person. It's like saying, you know, leave your job, leave your income, leave your leave your home, leave your family, leave everybody around you. And by the way, it's going to be a land I will show you. He doesn't even see the land. God doesn't even show him yet where he's going to take him. So how does Abraham respond? Verse 4, so Abram went as the Lord told him. Wow. Can you see why Abraham is called the father of faith? The man of faith by faith. He accepts this promise. And I think the lesson lesson for us is to be a, a conduit of God's blessing, it costs us something. It's going to cost us something. 
Abraham believed that God's promise was worth, was worth giving up what he was being asked to give up for the sake of the promise. It's for the promise that is set before Abraham that he obeys. He sacrifices his own comfort, his security, to take hold of the promises of God. And so we know that Abraham's descendants, they become the people of Israel, this blessed nation that is now going to restore the blessing. And it's through Israel that the Messiah Jesus comes to extend that blessing to all the nations. We see that God has fulfilled his promise. And he does that because he loves the world. So now that we've gotten to Jesus, let me talk about point number two. We see God's love through the blessing of Jesus. So God has poured his blessings upon Abraham so that his family would be a conduit of God's blessings to the whole world. And that promise has come to now its greatest fulfillment when God sends his son into the world 2,000 years ago. Now, uh, we just got uh, done with Acts, the great apostle Paul he sees the Messiah in this passage in a unique way. His God gave these promises to Abraham and his offspring. Or in the Hebrew, you could translate that seed. And so we get to Galatians 3.16, it says this. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Paul is saying Jesus was foreshadowed in the promises of Abraham. And Jesus is the fulfillment of those promises. And then Paul goes on to say in verse 8, Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance, foreshadowed to Abraham. All the nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Friends, do you see how Paul is shaping the gospel to say this is about the blessing of God being restored to people through faith in Jesus? It means we can walk with God and under his favor just like Adam and Eve did back in the garden. Wow. Wow, through faith in Jesus, the blessing of God is, can be restored. But it doesn't resolve everything. Because the battle was between the curse and the blessing. So if the blessing can be restored, well then what has God done about the curse? Well, Paul addresses that in Galatians 3.13. He says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole or on a tree, meaning the cross. So the great irony of Jesus' life is that he was born to die. He was born to die upon the cross and become a curse for us. God became man and he was killed by those he came to save. He was sent to be a blessing to the world, yet he received the curse of death. He was sent to bring peace, but he experienced violence. Jesus took upon himself the punishment of death, the curse that we deserve because of our own sin and rebellion. Jesus took that upon himself. Isaiah says he was pierced for our transgressions. But not only that, friends, he has now, because he has taken the curse, he has now made life with God a radical possibility once again because he did not stay dead. He rose to life. It says Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, for since death came through a man, that is Adam, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. See, the foreshadowing. Adam brought death, but Christ brings life. You see, as long as we live in this cursed world, we know that our, our bodies are damaged and weakened by sin, and we die. And we know what happens to us. And so we need God's life-giving spirit to be in us, to redeem us from the curse of death. And because Jesus died and rose again, if we are then united to him by his life-giving spirit in us, then what happened to Jesus on Easter Sunday will happen to us. 
when we die, we know that there is more. It's not the end of the story. We will rise again if we are united to him. Paul says in Galatians 3.14, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, the nations, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The life-giving Spirit in us, redeeming us from the curse of death. Oh, brothers and sisters, can you see this morning how much God loves you? That all the way back from Abraham, he has been planning for your redemption. And now in Christ, he has accomplished everything you need. He sent his one and only son because he loves you so much. He wants to lift the curse of death and bring you his blessing and his favor. He loves you more than you know. And Abraham, he was willing to give up his land, his people, his country, his father's household. How much more did the Son of God leave His place of glory to come to this land? He left the glory of heaven. He left His Father's household. He left the comfort of of being surrounded by angels. And He came to this broken, cursed, weary world and took upon the weakness of human flesh, becoming a servant, even becoming a curse so that the conduit of God's blessing could flow to us. One church father says this, Go to the cave of Bethlehem. There adore the infant which you will find laid on the straw in a manger and shivering with cold. Know that he is your God who would not consent to send anyone else to save you but would come himself that he might gain for himself all your love. The shivering Baby in the manger. God said, I'm not going to send anybody else. I'm coming in because I want all your love. I want all your love. And so God wants, us to, God wants us to respond to this love, to receive his blessing. And it's available to all of us if we put our faith in Jesus Christ. If we give him our obedience by faith as Abraham did. And this is why Paul says in Galatians 3.29, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And you are heirs according to the promise. You will inherit all the blessings promised to Abraham. The blessing of God returned to you. And it's true for us, friends. If you belong to Christ Jesus, hear this. You have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. You have been adopted into God's family. You have redemption and freedom from your sin. You have total forgiveness because of Jesus' death on the cross. You have the promised Holy Spirit inside of you, alivening you. You have access to the King of Kings in prayer. You are part of this great nation, this great kingdom of God that exists throughout the entire world. You have the fruit. You have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You have freedom from the curse. You have God's blessing, His favor, His protection is upon you. You have the promises of eternal life and the new heavens and the new earth and the resurrection when God makes all things new. Aren't you glad to be blessed by God? We have the blessings of God. This is how we see and experience His love. The blessings promised to Abraham, the blessing of Jesus Christ. And God also wants us now to see this through the church's love to the world. So my last point is this. We share God's love by blessing others. We share His love by blessing others. Friends, Abraham was not blessed for his own sake. He was invited into a mission to redeem the world. And we are not blessed in Christ for our own sake either, as wonderful as those things are. We are invited into Jesus' mission to redeem and restore this broken world through the blessing of God's love. So we are blessed to be a blessing. And the reason that Ebenezer Scrooge had such a transformation is because he realized he was blessed. He had been given a second chance he didn't deserve. He had been given grace. He could start over. He could be a different person. He could choose to bless instead of to be selfish. Because the reality was his selfishness had become a curse, did it not? It had destroyed his soul, becoming a selfish person. 
But now that he experienced grace, his soul turned outward. And it's as he is blessing others, joy is filling his soul. And friends, it's not enough to feel even a desire right now to bless others. It's not enough to think about blessing others in wonderful Christmas sentiments. It's not enough to intend to bless those around you. We must actually go about doing good, blessing other people around us with acts of sacrificial kindness and love. Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. We're blessed to be a blessing. Well over, like, it's like 13, 14 years ago now, I was in a chapel service at Bethel College, Laura and I were in, and there's, we still remember the sermon from that day, so you, you know it's good. And um, <laughs> he, uh, one of the things that he talked about was how we, we inhale grace and we exhale gratitude. Inhale grace, we exhale gratitude. We inhale God's blessing, His favor, His abundance, His peace, His hope, His love. Ah, we exhale it out to the world. We inhale God's blessing, we exhale it out to the world. That's how it's meant to be. And if we're so grateful that we have the blessings of God through Jesus, don't hold on to it for yourself. You're not meant to be simply a receiver of God's blessing, but a giver. You are not meant to be simply a container of God's blessing, but a conduit. You are not meant to be a reservoir collecting His blessings, but a river giving life and health to those around you. And wouldn't you agree that many of those around you, your family and friends, they're weary. We are in a weary world. And couldn't they use the blessing and love of God in their lives? We need people to be conduits of His blessing. So I want you to ask yourself, how can I be a blessing to others this season? How can I bless someone else? And you might want to ask the Holy Spirit, how, how can you be a blessing to those around you? But I'd also like to invite you to do do two things. The first is for all of you. And whether you're here right now or you're watching me online, I'd like you to invite someone to our Christmas Eve service this Friday. We have invitation cards that we put in your bulletin. Uh, You know, we talked for 28 weeks in the book of Acts how God says, you are to be my witnesses. And so the whole point of all that we do as a church is to extend the mission and blessing of God to the world. So friends, let's not make Christmas about enjoying the festivities, our own traditions, even the things we do as a church. Let's have all those things be about the mission of God. So are we missionaries or are we not? So I invite you to be a missionary. I invite you to invite someone to our Christmas Eve service, and we're going to be giving you an opportunity for that. Um, At that service, I'll be briefly uh, sharing the gospel, the good news. So if people come, they are going to hear a clear, simple explanation of the good news of Jesus Christ, and they will experience it through the scriptures and the songs as well. It's It's a beautiful and wonderful service, and we'd like you to fill this room up with people who need the blessing of God's love at Christmas time. By the way, we have child care for all ages, and uh, we'd like you to come to that as well. Who can you invite? The second thing is for some of you, just for some of you. Next Sunday, we are having a Stories of Grace Sunday. This is an opportunity uh, to publicly bless our congregation by sharing a way that God has blessed you. It could be uh, something recent that's happened in your life, a, a sign of God's love. It could be something from the past. It could be somehow a short presentation of how you came to know the Lord and His love for you. We'd like multiple people to share. Um, and so this is an opportunity to be courageous and to bless our congregation by sharing how God has blessed you. So I'd like to invite you to do that. If you're interested, email me and let me know. Um, and we'd like to just to fill this room with the blessing and love of God. And friends, I invite you to do all this because of all that God did for us. Look at how much He has done all the way back in Genesis up until now. And God even has more when Jesus comes again. 
So we have received the blessings of his love. Let us bless others with the love of God. Wherever we go, whoever we talk to, whatever we do, we are blessed by him to be a blessing. And I'll close with the words of Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone.